أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم وقوله الحق وهو أصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Respected scholars, elders, brothers, sisters, salam alaykum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The banquet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now been folded up. The gates of hell have begun to be unlocked. The soul and its desires that were tamed and controlled for an entire month by the intake of food and by the state it understood in a conscious manner that it was in, in the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the state in which it understood consciously that it was seeking refuge in the palace of the All-Merciful has now departed from us. Many of us, God forbid, may go back to that uncontrollable self which we were 30 days ago. But a handful of servants will choose a very different path from here onwards. Their tears that they shed in this holy month that came down their cheeks and dropped on their hearts would have washed away their sins and their supplications that came from the depths of their hearts would have torn away all veils between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their hearts will no longer be deceived by the attractions of this world, the superficial reality of this world. From here onwards they will look at what's real and remove the fake from the real and aim towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This group of people will seem very strange to the majority. They won't be excited by the riches and the treasures of the dunya as much as we may speak to them. It won't bring a smile to their face, they won't run after it. When you hear their speech, it's minimal, it's to the point, and it's something that has wisdom within. If you look at their life, they'll change their lifestyle to that which is simple. When you ask them about their goals, they'll have lofty goals of the next life. These are people whose hearts have been opened by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in whose hearts He has poured His divine love. They have divorced the dunya, and they're only attracted towards the Akhara. Yes, they will work in the dunya, but they will not serve the dunya. Because the Holy Prophet said, O Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala ila dunya. They remember the saying of the Prophet. The Prophet says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, gave wahi, revealed to the dunya. Ikhdimi man khadamani. O dunya, go and serve the one who serves me. Wa at'ibi man khadamaki. And go and tire out and wear out the one who serves you. The servant who runs towards the dunya, Allah has prohibited them from attaining it. They will continuously run towards it. They will tire themselves. They will run out of breath, but they will never achieve it. But Allah has promised the total opposite. That for those who serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has told the dunya to run after them and serve them. This dunya, it's like a snake that coils itself around man. It doesn't let go very easily once it's got hold of someone. 
An anecdote which is attributed to Isa السلام, is when he saw the world as an old woman, an ugly old woman who tried to beautify herself with all the adornments possible. So he asks her, Kam tazawajti? O oh dunya, how many people have you been married to? She said, La uhsihim. I've run out. I can't count anymore. He says, فَكُلُّهُمْ مَاتَ عَنْكِ أَوْ كُلُّهُمْ طَلَّقَكِ Have all of them died whilst they're with you or have all of them divorced you? And the dunya replied and says, بَلْ كُلُّهُمْ قَتَلْتُ Rather, I killed every single one of them. So Isa speaks out in astonishment. بُؤْسًا لِأَزْوَاجِكَ الْبَاقِينَ How wretched are those husbands of yours who still remain? كَيْفَ لَا يَعْتَبِرُونَ بِأَزْوَاجِكَ الْمَاضِينَ How is it that they don't take a lesson from your previous husbands? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made clear for us in the Qur'an, so clear that we shall have no excuse on the day of judgment, that our mission in this life is very simple. It's one. If you want to be successful, it's very simple. And if you and I want to corrupt ourselves, it's very simple. He says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا When speaking about the soul. The one who has succeeded is the one who purifies it. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا And the one who has corrupted it has failed. You and I can do whatever we like in this life. All the halal is open to us. So long as this mission is met. If we purify this soul, then you and I will be of those who are successful. Why? Because you and I know that there's a journey that awaits us which is much more difficult than anything you and I have experienced. Anything that we have experienced. The difficulty that is awaiting us is much greater. That is why the first holy Imam says, and he lets out a sigh. Can you imagine this great man? No wrong, not to anyone, neither to his Lord, yet he lets out a great sigh and he says ah min qillat az-zad wa bu'd as-safar wa wahshat at-tariq he lets out a sigh and he says oh because of these small provisions that i have and the lengthy journey that still awaits me and the dangers of this path which are around me if we need to collect a provision for the journey that hasn't yet begun then we already spoke about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادَ التَّقْوَى Go and get provisions in this life for the next one. And the best of provisions is taqwa. Imam says, حَرَامٌ عَلَى كُلِّ قَلْبٍ مُتَوَلِّهٍ بِالدُّنْيَا Imam says, it is prohibited, it is haram for any heart that has become infatuated with the dunya and taskunuhu at taqwa that taqwa should reside within it it's a choice that you and i have a crossroads that we're in today at this very moment because tomorrow is not going to be like it was today the mercy that was available today is no longer available tomorrow the choice should be taken now this crossroads is in front of us where do we wish to go Towards the dunya, which means everything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or towards Allah. Do we take a path of purification, a path in which we have to cleanse ourselves? In this holy month, you and I were forcefully cleansed. It was wajib to fast. We didn't have a choice. Allah cleansed us such that He says through the words of the Prophet that I'm surprised that if someone's not forgiven in this month, then which month should they be forgiven in? The only individual who is not forgiven in this month is the wretched individual and that's none of us here. So take it for granted that today you and I have been forgiven of all of our sins that we committed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sins that remain are the sins we committed against one another. Haqqun nas. Now what do we do? The holy month is finished. Every year when it comes to this time, we say how quickly the month went by every year. It's a lesson that comes year on year that it goes by quickly. Change, change quickly. But now what do we do? Do I wait a few days and go back to being the same person I was? Or do I now hold on to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
do I take account of myself and rearrange my priorities? Understand where I was placing God in my list of priorities and rearrange them so now, now He's at the top of every action that I do. But Allah, this soul is so bad. It's done so much wrong. It's taken me to so much wrong. How is it possible that you will even have mercy on it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet to tell you and I, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي The Prophet says, Allah says, O oh my servants, who are Allah's servants? The ones who haven't done any sins, they're Allah's servants as well. But Allah defines His servants very differently in the Quran. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي O oh my servants, who are my servants? الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ O oh my servants who have transgressed and wronged and sinned their own souls. Even the sinners are the servants of Allah. What advice do you have for us Allah? We're about to enter a new phase of our life. What advice do you have? لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Oh my servant, don't cut yourself off from the mercy of Allah. Don't think that this mercy is not great. إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive every single sin that you and I have done. Don't look at the mercy of Allah like it's something small. It's available to each and every one who wants it. إنه هو الغفور الرحيم Why? Because he prides himself by calling himself الغفور and الرحيم. But there's two conditions. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ Return back to your Lord. Ask for istighfar. وَأَسْلِمُوا And submit to him. Submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before when? مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابِ Before the azab comes to you. Why? What happens as soon as the azab comes to me? ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ No one will be there to help you if the azab comes. Return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the azab comes. Look at how Fir'aun, when he was about to be taken over, when he was about to drown, that's when he turns around and he says, Now I believe in the Lord of Musa. Then it's too late because then we see the reality. Then we see what our hands have sent forth. The test is now before we see the answers. A part of the a'mal we just completed was to turn to Allah and say, Atubu ilallah. It's something we should continuously do until at least tomorrow morning at the time of the salah. But in the verses we just mentioned, forgiveness was only one part of this condition. Ask for forgiveness. We're cleansed now. But Allah says, Wa aslimu and submit back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do I submit to Allah? Well, in these series of discussions that we had, eight discussions thus far, we concentrated and we looked at the ethics that you and I need to uphold as a community. What you and I as individuals have to do in order to progress and move this community closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We examined the cornerstones of this community. We looked at unity. We looked at Amr al Ma'roof. And we understood that each and every one of us has to partake in these actions. But then, we looked at two groups of people. We looked at the scholars and we looked at the leaders. There was a reason why we looked at these two groups. There was a reason why we titled it such that we took examples from these two groups. We are indebted to these two groups because they've taken responsibilities off our shoulders. طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم ومسلمة Seeking knowledge is an obligation of, on every Muslim man and Muslim woman, not just on a scholar. They've taken that duty from our shoulders and they're preaching and guiding us. With regards to the leaders, somebody has to lead the community. Certain individuals have stood up and taken the burden of our shoulders. These two groups are always in the limelight in our community. Hence, we use them as examples and we looked at some of their characteristics, some characteristics that they should have and some characteristics that they shouldn't have. But did you notice, as these discussions progressed, 
it was very easy for some of us to attach names to those characteristics. That as soon as we heard of pride with regards to a scholar, quickly to our minds came the name of Sheikh X. And as soon as we spoke about the dunya and a scholar loving the dunya and calling people to himself, the name of Sayyid Y came to my mind. And when I talked about a hypocrite, Sheikh X came again. And when I talked about inconvenience, peop inconveniencing people, the name of somebody else came to my mind. When we spoke about leaders, did you notice when we spoke about the virtues and vices of leaders that as soon as we exited the hall, our discussions revolved around some remarks that we started talking to one another and we heard from each other's mouths that you know that characteristic of not listening to the people that's the characteristic of such and such a person you know the characteristic of not adhering to the promise it's this particular leader not being patient well it's that particular person taqwa it's that organization laziness it's that president but when we spoke about sincerity and tawakkul, we didn't attach a name of any group to that discussion. And when we heard about those virtues, when you sat with different cluster groups in the community, these virtues were something that all of us could have acted upon. But for those of us whose minds wandered and took on the names of other people when we heard a vice, or for those of us whose speech began to utter the names of individuals when we heard about these characteristics that were not good, we need to remember the hadith of Isa alayhi salam in which he says, Ya ibad su O servants of sin, O servants who are sinful, talumun nas ala dhan you are blaming people and pointing fingers at people based on conjecture. Based on conjecture. You think that these people have those vices. You're not certain. As soon as you and I heard about pride and we attached it to the topic of scholar, we started to blame a particular scholar or a particular president. It was easy for names to come to our minds. Based on what? Isa says based on van based on you and I not having certainty. If today Allah says that name that came to your mind or came out of your tongue when you accuse somebody, are you certain that that person has that vice within them? You and I may not be able to prove it. It's easy for mankind to point outside and to blame people outside and to pass on the buck of responsibility to say those people have to change that organization has to change but Isa continues Ya ibadi su O servants of sin talumun al nas ala dhan you blame people based on conjecture wala talumun anfusakum ala al yaqeen but you don't blame yourselves even though you're certain of your own sins and vices. That we look at other people very quickly. We point at other people very easily even though we're not certain of their sins and their vices. But for us to point at ourselves even though we're certain that those characteristics are within myself, that's very difficult. Put the title of scholars onto a discussion in a lecture and it's very easy to find these people and find their faults. Put the title of leaders on this lecture and it's very easy to find who they are and where their faults are. But now listen to all the characteristics that we've discussed in eight lectures. And uh, let us ask ourselves whether or not you and I as general members of the community are immune from it. We spoke about disunity first. Who is the root cause of disunity if it's not the general public? When we talked about not doing Amr bil Ma'roof, there's only one, two, a handful of scholars, there's only one, two leaders. The majority of people who have to do Amr bil Ma'roof are you and I. When we talked about pride, is it not you and I as well as every other strata and level in society that can be attacked by this vice? When we talked about loving the dunya, it wasn't only those scholars who called themselves to the, to the dunya, it's also you and I who fall into the traps of the dunya. When we spoke about hypocrites, whether outside is different to the inside, 
Is it not also the general public who are backbiting a certain individual while standing outside and as soon as that individual comes to say salam, they greet him with such a nice voice. Is that not a hypocrite as well? When we spoke about inconveniencing people, you and I as fathers, have we thought about ourselves and how much we inconvenience our spouse, how much we inconvenience our family to do simple actions that you and I could accomplish and fulfill? When we spoke about leaders and we spoke about those people who may not listen to the opinions of others, it was easy to point fingers. But how many of us have upheld our opinions out of being stubborn because we didn't want a younger person to be able to correct us? When we spoke about fulfilling the promise, how many times have we not fulfilled our promises? Patience, taqwa, laziness. Each and every characteristic that we discussed can attack you and I and all levels of this society. We spoke about sincerity in action and intention. We spoke about tawakkul as well. The first person who should come to our minds when we hear about any problem or vice is ourselves. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi'anfusihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change a people until and unless they change themselves. Every individual takes on the responsibility of changing themselves and the whole community will change and move closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is for this reason that the first Imam says, Tuba, blessed, Tuba liman shagalahu aibuhu an uyub nas. Blessed be the person who is preoccupied with his own faults rather than being preoccupied by the faults of other people. So before we advise other people to change, our duty is that we begin to change ourselves. When somebody advises another to change, it doesn't have an effect if they themselves are not practicing. It's like the father who tells his son not to smoke, but he's smoking himself. Like the father who tells his son, a bit of a sensitive example, but not to eat this mao, is it? This red stuff that will probably kill you sooner or later. Not to eat this, this thing, but he himself is eating it. It's a vice. It's no, not beneficial. You know when Maraja asked, that is it haram to smoke? They say an intellectual person wouldn't do it. Somebody who has wisdom, has a mind, who thinks, that person wouldn't do it. Only a foolish, ignorant person would do something that would bring destruction to the health that he asks Allah, Allah give me health and a long life. And the same person a few minutes later goes to the destruction of the same thing that he asks for. Only a foolish person would do that. How can a father correct his son if he himself is falling into these same vices? That's why the Imam says, كَيْفَ يُصْلِحُ غَيْرَ مَنْ لَا يُصْلِحْ نَفْسَهُ How can a person go and correct another person and try and rectify him if he's not working on his own self? Our duty then, as a conclusion, our duty as members of this blessed community that Allah has allowed us to be a part of is whether we are leaders, we are scholars, or we are general members of the public. The initial duty for everyone is the same. Let them change themselves and work on themselves before they begin to point fingers at others. And it's only when we work on ourselves that we can begin to advise others. Yes, scholars will make mistakes and it's our duty as general members to go and indicate this to them in a polite fashion. Leaders will make mistakes, they'll make wrong decisions. We're in this together. We're holding the rope of Allah together. It's our duty to go and speak to them politely and try and correct them and air our opinion. But you and I as members of the community, we too will make mistakes and we must take our guidance from the Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam. With everything you and I learn from the Quran and the Hadith, you and I must practice it as well. We must ensure that we look past our differences, remain united, don't try and devise a community based on petty issues. Look over people's differences with us 
in the same way as we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to look past and over our mistakes. On that note, I extend my gratitude to yourself, to your management committee for inviting me to your blessed community. I pray to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala that there has been some benefit in the discussions we have had. It is only my duty to also ask you to pray to Allah to bless my host for this time that I was here, Ibrahim uncle Ja'far and his honorable family. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in this holy month that has passed us, he forgives us for our sins. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completes everything that we have fallen short of. We ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to instill and bring about unity in our community. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the youth of our community of Allah make them steadfast on Sirat al Mustaqeem. O oh Allah, those who are elderly in our community, Allah give them health and a long life. O oh Allah, the poor in our community, enrich them. O oh Allah, the wealthy in our community, give them generous hearts to provide to the rest. O oh Allah, the marhumin of our community, elevate their station, forgive their sins, and place them close to that of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam. Allah, we ask you to forgive our parents, the people who have brought us up. I ask you to forgive me for any shortcomings they are from myself, and I hope we have benefited from the words of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam, wa akhru da'wan, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad, wa ala ahli bayt, ahit tayyibin, al-tahirin.